I'm Michael Cass. This is Culture Confluence, where culture and art meet. Test, test, one, two, one, two. <clears throat> Let me talk a bit normally. Sometimes I get a bit agitated and talk like this. That's good. That's You're agitated is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long have we known each other? 2015. 2015, Canada Winter Games. Canada Winter Games. Was when we met. And I don't remember who said hi to who, and I don't remember what time. It just kind of happened. Yeah. Um, just going to turn this on. Do not disturb? And it... I don't know if we met in the, like, spotted a professional from the other side of the room kind of thing, like in a room full of volunteers, but there was, there was, a, there was a room of photographers. I remember that one of those first meetings, and I just stood at the back being like, what if I get cold? <laughs> I need a jacket. <laughs> you got any pants? Give like, me that jacket. I had to go buy pants. And, uh, yeah, the Canada Winter Games was a great experience, and we met. Um, were we on the slopes together at some point? Like you No. Were, what it was is you needed a ride. Was that what it was? You needed a ride. Okay. And I remember you they saying... They, they were providing vehicles, and then they took that away. Did they, Were they pro- going to provide Originally, vehicles? yeah. Yeah, oh, it had on my... Because it had on our, on, our, on our passes, uh, vehicle pass. But we weren't allowed to call for a vehicle. I did several times. You needed... This was before the game started. We were at the... We were at the... Uh, Orientation at, at, the, at the Wood Innovation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then and then you said you needed a ride and I, I could give you a ride. Okay. And it went from there. Nice. Yeah. And we were going to photograph the... Uh, first of all, let me explain here. I'm, I'm Michael Cass. This is Culture Confluence and I'm with, with my good friend Giles Palmer, photographer in Prince George. A, a, are you a landed citizen? or I'm a, a resident. Resident. Yeah. He's a resident. Yeah, now, working on my citizenship, but it takes a while. Working on the citizenship. Yeah. Does it take a while? It can, yeah. My uh, youngest son is wants to become a citizen of Finland. Uh, yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. I'm like, hey, whatever floats your boat, man. Why not? I believe yeah. that we should be able to live anywhere in the world that we want to live. I think so, too. You know, and he was saying how people in Finland are so are really happy people. I'm like, well, most Norwegian yeah. or most Nordic countries are Sweden, Denmark. There's there's a reason why we won't get into the politics of it here. No, not at all. I think no. fin- Finland is ranked as one of the happiest countries. I think though. Yeah, and they have good vodka. I think. Do I, they? I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> I don't drink vodka. I don't know. So your photography. Yeah. Primary. Primary photography. Yeah. Uh, I do video as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just started a YouTube channel this last two weeks. What is it? Giles Palmer. Giles Palmer. G I L E S. Yep. P A L M E R. M E R. On YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. And vlogging. I know you had the one there, like number four. Yeah. Reasons why I do not like to vlog. Yeah. And yeah. I am with you. I was watching it, and I and you were like. I got to make up a script because sometimes I'll sit there and I'll have all these great ideas, but if I don't write them down and I go to do the vlog, I'm totally blank. How about you? Yeah, no, that's the hardest thing I think about recording yourself on camera is that you have to record yourself. You have to talk to a camera lens directly and and you have to talk to it, it. You have to talk to the camera like it is a person. Like you have to look it right in the lens and say what you want to say and I fall over my words all the time I get flustered I say the same thing several times there's a lot of editing I was just going to say <laughs> do you know how many takes I have to do yeah, just yeah. for like a, a 15 second blurb for oh yeah whatever a story or, oh, yeah. or, or, or what do you think of reels what do you think of reels personally I think reels are, that's just where everything's going everything's moving towards vertical video and um, people are seeing a lot of explosive growth on growth on reels um, reels TikTok uh, Facebook reels Instagram reels YouTube shorts I experimented last night with my first uh, YouTube short I made some original content filmed it all on my phone uh, that was about 15 hours ago and it's had over 6,000 views I couldn't believe the, Which I did my first reel yeah. just a little while ago, and I couldn't believe the, 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 how it just went. Like the, I was amazed at the number of likes. I can't, I can't remember, reach. but it just took off. The reach is incredible. Uh, the algorithms across all the different social media platforms is pushing 
vertical video. Until, so and then it gets you to make more and then the algorithm will change. Oh, of course. Until you, it, it, and then it's based on all the other stuff. Yeah, of that, course. That algorithms are based on. You gotta remember, if, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. That's that movie. What was that movie? There's the social dilemma the so on so YouTube yeah. on our Netflix. I yeah. highly recommend if you're in social media, you watch it. It's eye opening. Uh, it is. It, I watched it. I don't think I finished it, but I was mm. like, I was stunned. Mm -hmm. I was stunned at how, at how much they know about us. Yeah. So the algorithm will change depending on what the advertisers want to put out there. Like if they want to, if the advertisers go, oh no, we want to see more photographs. Instagram will. Go back to photographs. How, um, do you ever try and screw up the algorithm? What do you mean? Change, change what you're doing. So for instance, the algorithm on your newsfeed yeah. will says, oh, this guy is left leaning for me. This mm -hmm. is for me. Left leaning social, you know, I'm not a social justice warrior, but I'm socially conscious. So I get, I keep getting spoon fed mm -hmm. stuff from like HuffPost yep. and, and sort of left leaning news things. So what I do is I change it up and I'm like, ah, I'm going to do here. I'm going to go there. Even though I may not read it, I'll open it and then close it. But they still see how long you visit the Right. Yeah. But I have to do that in order to stop them from feeding me the stuff that will just not challenge my worldview. I think on my social presence on Instagram and Facebook, I try to stay away from political like things. Mm -hmm. But I do get served a lot of truck posts for my <laughs> Tacoma. I get served a lot of um, tons of social media, uh, how to grow, how to evolve, um, all all the different podcasts all the time. Yeah. Um, but I do manage several different social media accounts. So I'm flitting between them all the time. And I, I, I honestly, the feed I find to be the most frustrating thing on Instagram now, just scrolling through things. It's not, a, it's not my friends anymore. It's, it's all these suggested posts. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really into that. But you can go, you can change it if you go up to the right, click on the Instagram, yeah. right? And you can do following, yeah. you're following, right? Yeah. I'm finding for whatever reason on certain days like today, and I don't know if that's just an Instagram thing, I was like, I was like, wow, there's more art on here than, than I've seen before, more art that interests me. So maybe the algorithm changed, or maybe it's just because Tuesdays are a good day to post. But we're, we're not here to talk about social media, we're here to talk about your photography. Sure. Why? Why? Why photography? What, what drove you, what brought you into? Uh, I think I was almost forced into it. Really? Um, I picked up a Canon 5D Mark II for video. I have a film degree mm -hmm. and I wanted to do more video. And I moved to Whistler from England and I got a job as a photographer uh, with Coast Mountain Photography. So prior to moving to Canada in 2013, I was um, shooting video. I, I didn't do very many stills with my Canon 5D Mark II. And when I was up there in the mountains taking photographs of some tourists and, and whoever wanted photographs up there and wanted to pay for the company for them, um, I loved it. And I ended up being the highest uh, grossing photographer on the mountain that season. Cool. Yeah, which was wicked fun. And I mm -hmm. And everyone seemed to really love my photographs. I think I was going against the grain a little bit. They were like, you know, shoot at F11 or F15 and get all the details in the background in, which is cool. It's a, it's a much more, a much like more nineties sort of, I mm -hmm. think vibe for on mountain photography where I was trying to shoot, even in bright sunlight, I was trying to shoot at F4, F4.5, like trying to keep it under nine mm -hmm. and bringing that blurrier background, which in 2012, 2013, 14 was still kind of a new thing that people like, unless you had a professional camera, you weren't going to get that kind of effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there aren't very many people in this world. Well, there are, but there's not very many people in Whistler that were going to ski for fun with their big fancy DSLR camera. And there was a team of us doing it. So, yeah, <clears throat> I, um, that I was taught that like, that was the way I was taught how to do, how to do portraits, shallow depth of field. Doesn't matter where you are. The, the focus is on the person, not the landscape, blah, blah, blah. If you want landscape photos, go out and take landscape photos. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. And, and they will probably have their own, landscape photos they'll have the back then what was that the 90s you said no 
No, in 2013. 2013, 2014. Yeah. So they had a they had, they, they had a phone, they had yeah. a phone, or they had a they had an you know a, yeah. a mirrorless camera that they could use. And I think we were taught that way so that the all the group would be in focus as well because often it was large groups mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and families and they wanted everything to be nice and sharp. So shooting with a flash in like bright sunlight and uh, a, a like an f11 depth f stop, then it was. Uh, it made sure that everything was in focus. Yeah. Yeah. With no missed focuses, no missed opportunities. Yeah. I've noticed I'm bad that way because I don't, I don't wear my glasses and I, for, or I forget to wear my glasses and I, I they're, have they're my on your head right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't need them to, I don't need them to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how did you, uh, I want to, so we're, we're going to talk a little bit about your con, the confluence of you coming to Canada sure. and your art, yep. right? Because it is an art. took a long time to yes. convince people that photography was an art. Yes. I remember, you know, people are like, oh, you know, it's just taking a picture of something that's already made. Yeah. I'm like, mm, I, I disagree with you, you. Yeah. Oh, no. I disagree with you. I disagree. You disagree? I disagree with it's something already made. No, you're making something. Like, I I always when I think about taking someone's pictures, like headshots, I think about the um, the Aboriginal tribes in Australia being scared of photographs and photographers because they thought they were stealing their soul. Soul, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's yeah. I, I'm like I'm ta- I'm stealing people's souls taking photographs. Well, that's a little dark. <laughs> <laughs> I, not, I like this. I like to say I'm, I'm capturing one. I'm capturing the essence of the person at that moment in time. Yeah. Right. Well, essence of a person could be considered yeah, the soul. Absolutely could be. Well, you know, I was just telling my coworker at, uh, that I wanted to be a psychic vampire. So maybe this is my. You have been all along. All along. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I believe that. Um, Great photography can really transform the way a person maybe even looks at themselves. Um, if you have someone who really knows what they're doing and poses you properly and has the correct lighting and flash and knows what they're doing in the post-processing stage of, of editing and then the way everything is delivered. I mean, if you get a fancy burger and it's on a plastic platter, it's just going to feel like a plastic Presentation, platter. baby. Uh, presentation is everything. So... Um, when you when you really get into it, you, you have to invest a little bit to, to make things look nice. And I think that's all part of it. Definitely. You know, I was going through, uh, I want to go back to, I want to go back to, first of all. Sorry, sorry. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, when you came over, when you came across the pond Twister. and across the country. Yep. What, what brought you to, you wanted to ski? You wanted to. I never what, skied. You never skied? I never snowboarded. So you just were, it's an adventure? It's an adventure. Life's an adventure. And I, like I said to you before, I believe we should be able to live anywhere we wanted to live. Now but, I, go on. No, uh, I was going to say, why here? Why yeah. Why in the mountains of, well, of was, British it, Columbia? It, it, it almost didn't happen, right? I, I was living in London, uh, working for Apple, and things were stagnating. I wasn't going anywhere. I was 24, 23, 23. And I'm like, I, I need to uh, change things up. Yeah. And I was like, right, I'm young enough still that I can do a working holiday. Um, I can still work. I can still pay my way because I didn't have a lot of savings. I could maybe bring my camera with me and do some work. That's what mm-hmm. my thought process was. And uh, I had a MacBook from 2012 in my bag, new at the time. And I um, uh, had a choice. Like I could go to New Zealand, which I'd visited before. I visited Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And mm-hmm. they all have this working holiday program. I wanted to go somewhere... English speaking, just for my ease of use, I don't speak any other languages. Um, uh, and I hadn't visited British Columbia hmm. at all. I loved New Zealand, Queenstown, like being up in the mountains, but I wanted to visit BC and see what it was all about. My friends had done it the previous year and had a blast. So I thought, you know, why not? Let's, let's book a flight, <laughs> one-way flight uh, with a visa to bc to work and i had original thoughts of going to banff i landed in vancouver and it was wow vancouver's big this is cool um how how can i get to banff (laughs) how do i get there it's i'll just take the train (laughs) my naive mind trains in england are very different to canada (laughs) to bc especially and i got here and i was like why is it three thousand dollars to one way to go to banff like 
oh, that's the Canadian Rocky Mountain Traveler or whatever it oh, is, Mount, Rocky Brack, Mountaineer. Yeah, exp- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, one day, one day I'd like to go on that train, but not for $3,000 when no. I just got to the country. So I was like, oh, how long is the bus? I'll just take the bus. It can't be that far away. It's like 19, 20 hours by bus, by Greyhound at the time to get to Banff. Yeah, hell no, that's not happening. What else can I do? And people around me in the hostel were like, we were talking about what your plans were. And these uh, English guys were like, we're going to Whistler. You should come come to Whistler. I was like, what's Whistler? And everyone laughs when I tell them that because like, the, to them, it's like it's such a well-known place. But I've mm-hmm. never heard of it. I'm not into skiing. I'm not into snowboarding at the time. So I got on uh, Craigslist or um, Kijiji or Facebook. I can't remember where I found the guy, but I found a cabin like an A-frame, wooden frame house. And I got a place for the first month and went to Whistler. That's amazing. I mean, that's amazing that you found a place to live. Oh, it gets better. Okay. So I, the, to meet the landlord, he was going to be driving into Vancouver like the next day. And I emailed him. He's like, yeah, no, I'll meet you. I'll uh, meet you at the, uh, I was like, I'm going to be at Capilano Suspension Bridge. Can you meet me there? Oh yeah, no worries. I'll meet you there. And uh, there's a gas station just down the road. So I was met him at a gas station baking hot day waiting in the sun at this parking lot of this gas station and the at the time biggest ram truck pulled up uh, in front of me and my friend who was with me and this huge larger than life guy comes out and cowboy hat on and like shakes my hand and this is greg mm-hmm. and greg welcomes me with open arms and meets me off the bus in greyhound a couple of days later in whistler and he takes me to the, his uh, amazing uh, log house. It wasn't a cabin. This is this is a house. And he uh, works for casinos building fancy lights. And he has a couple of these fancy lights and stuff in inside the house. And we go to, he takes me mountain biking at Lost Lake. And we like, look at the girls at Lost Lake, which is a lot of fun. And then we go to... Uh, uh, the local grocery store and grab some burgers and some and some supplies for burgers and he goes back to his place we cook a burgers on the barbecue on the deck i meet the other tenants live there's about five or six other tenants there's more coming there's another story and a black bear walks down the road now i've been in canada less than two weeks at this point i've seen a bear i've swam in a lake which i've never done before i've mountain biked in whistler like this is amazing i'm having the time of my life mm-hmm. um And uh, I find out through the grapevine over the next month that Greg has been known to the community for some time and shut down by the fire department multiple times because he overstuffs his house with people. So there'll be up to 50 to 70 people. This is rumor. I can't confirm this Mm -hmm. um, at any one time. And he will... Uh, get shut down by the fire department because there's just too many people staying at this house. Yeah. And when I got there, I thought I was getting my own room. I was ended up sharing a room with a with one of my now longest friends from Whistler. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a great experience. And then I, within two days of living in this place, I had a job at the bike park, uh, teching bikes. Mm-hmm. I'd never teched a bike before. It was great. Everything's an adventure. <laughs> yeah, I, learned, yeah. I learned so much. Um, I learned that I suck at mountain biking and that jumps are not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> After slicing up my leg on a big yeah, jump. Yeah. Um, it, I, I, the bike just left me. Maybe I can learn, but not right now. <laughs> and uh, I like technical trails rather than jumps. And uh, that was coming to a close in the winter season. Like I could, I could stay on and work, you know, taking skis. And mm-hmm. it was amazing lifestyle in Whistler. You, everything's tradable. Like taxi ride drivers will trade for bikes. Um, you can trade bikes for, you know, pitchers of beer and nachos at the pub. And we have regular staff nights where we wouldn't pay for anything. And everything's done on trade because mm-hmm. you're not paid very much. And, and, you know, it's a minimum wage job. Yeah. And then I got a job um, working for Coast Mountain Photography uh, in Whistler. Uh, amazing company to this day. I love them so much. And they gave me a job. I said I'd never skied and never snowboarded. And they said, right, we get a pass uh, six weeks before we start work. We don't start work until mid-December. So you get a pass six weeks before, go up to the top of the mountain and just learn. Learn. Learn how to ski. I was like, oh, Okay. You know, if worst comes to worst, I've had six weeks of fun trying to learn how to snowboard or ski. Yeah. And I tried to snowboard because that's what the cool kids do. Mm-hmm. I can't snowboard. I really hurt myself snowboarding, um, slipping on some ice on the very first day of work. 
So I said, well, I've got to try skiing. I just got to just try it. And I've rollerbladed most of my life. Mm-hmm. It was like second nature. I was ripping down the mountain on skis, no worries. And the best thing about skiing with a camera is that it's way harder to stop with a snowboard and get in the right position. Whereas with the skis, they come on and off really easily and you can just pivot wherever you want to be facing whichever direction you want to face on skis over a snowboard. Um, so you can get into position and shoot uphill and get the best shots you can. It's, it, was, it was way better for photography. So, <clears throat> I mean, I always ask people, like, how did you end up in, like, in Prince George? That's another good question. Was that, was there a certain gal, certain woman in your life that, or was that something that you just sort of, I'll let you tell the story. I was going to say, I think you know the answer to this <laughs> I think question. I know a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, I was in Whistler now. At this point, this was probably about. January, February time. I'm having a wicked time. I'm like, okay, this photography thing, this is really fun. I want to get maybe some different cameras. And I was on Facebook Marketplace and or buy and sell group, I think at that point. <clears throat> and a uh, Polaroid camera came across my feed and I was like, oh, I'd like that. Mm-hmm. It's 10 bucks. Awesome. Message the girl. And she said, yeah, no, you can have it, but there's someone, there's someone in front of you that, uh, that's already called for it. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, if it does come my way, I'll throw in a, an action photograph shoot. A, that's good for my portfolio. B, they get some cool photographs. And C, I might get this Polaroid before this other guy gets it. A couple of days later, she sends me a message. The guy no showed, do you want the camera? And when can we do the shoot? I was like, okay, great, let's do the shoot. So we arranged the shoot to happen uh when her sister came to town and her sister came to town i met them at the top of the mountain i finally got the camera after a couple weeks of just she was just holding on to it and we uh shot all day and the sister that came down came from prince george and she was smiling the entire time we were doing this shoot now everyone smiles for photographs but i've shot a lot of people doing action style Mm -hmm. shoots and they're concentrating and their face is all screwed up and they're like you know, grimacing a little bit as they go over bumps or jumps or whatever. Mm-hmm. But this lady was just smiling, beaming the whole time. And that was, that was cool. I was, I was like, it's, 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 it's got a great smile. Did you, did it's got you, a great smile. Did you think she was going to become the mother of your I, at that children? Time, at that time, I didn't. So we went down to uh, Whistler and we met for drinks and gave her the photographs and um, chicken wings. And she had, chicken wings and, and and a beer with me and then we met up the next day on my day off and the day after that another thing she lost her phone we almost didn't meet up again oh uh, we went for breakfast the next day in creekside and i skied there and i went up and skied down and she couldn't answer her phone because it was in a snowbank somewhere <laughs> and the uh, fates intervened and the fates intervened and she got hold of me on facebook uh, messenger and i met her for breakfast and then um i met i there was another moment where uh, I was working at a, a hat, the hat gallery in Whistler. Do you ever need a hat in Whistler? Go check out the hat gallery. Got some great selections. Anyway, I, <laughs> uh, she said, we're having drinks. It's my last day. Come and meet us. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I really want to, but I'm, I'm just about to start a shift. I had, I think, five jobs when I was in Whistler. It was a busy time. And my coworker said, looks and said to me, you go. Go for an hour. I'll cover you. Don't worry about it. Really? Yeah, no, I'll stay for another hour. Okay. So I ran. (laughs) And on the way to meet her, I called my mum. And I said, mum, I think I've met someone. I think I've, I think I've met someone who's going to be really important to me. And then we went and had drinks. That is an amazing story. Mm-hmm. And and how did you look? So it was her last day, right? Her last day there. Yep. And did she say, follow me, follow me to Prince George? She didn't. Um, she stole my glasses and stole my jacket. <laughs> and ran around a corner um, to somewhere a little bit more private. And we had a little smooch. Nice. And uh, we stayed in touch when she went back up to Prince George. Mm-hmm. And um, 
we called most days and I had plans to actually move to Tofino. Mm -hmm. And I did. I officially moved everything to Tofino once my contract was over with Coast Mountain. I moved down to Tofino and the same luck happened. I was there for three days in a campsite and I found camping in hammock, by the way, which is also amazing. If you've never hammock camped, it's, mm -hmm. it's really great. Um, and I found a, a room in Tofino in early season. Uh, I think it was end of April, beginning of May. And uh, but I, the the worst news struck when my visa got declined. Oh! So my second work visa got declined, and or I missed the boat because it's like the lottery trying to get one of these visas sometimes. And uh, I, I made a financial decision to not work for a year, basically, and take out some visitor visas, and I moved to Prince George. Do you remember the days when, when the Commonwealth, you could travel anywhere in the Commonwealth without without a visa? When did that end? I, I don't know. I don't know, man, but it's unfortunate that it did. I missed that. Yeah. yeah it I, was... They're trying to bring something like that back. There was a movement to allow freedom of movement between Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and I think somewhere else. Do you do uh, maybe Scotland, maybe Ireland? I don't know. Well, that's part of the United Kingdom. Part, are they part of the Commonwealth though? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, are Canadians, do you, do you find, were Cana when you got here, yeah. was your impression of Canadians as nice as what everybody said they were? Oh yeah, no, 100%. Uh, but you guys, I think you swear a lot more frequently in family settings than I've ever noticed. Really? And you, I think you drink more at home. Yeah, we don't have a lot of pubs, right? Like, yeah. like the pub, the pub probably doesn't play an integral part of our social scene as it does for for people in the yeah, UK. Yeah, no, definitely. Pubs right? in England are a big staple. And and Roast so that's dinners. I think yeah, that's a cultural. Yeah. That's definitely a cultural thing. Um, yeah. So you get to Prince George. You move to Prince George. Yep. From Tofino. Yep. Blows my mind. Yeah. But it must be love. That was a twenty-four hour coach ride. Uh yeah. Yeah. So I blew off the coach ride to go to Banff, remember? And well, and I mean, 18, anything for love, hours, right? And, yeah, I, and the 24 hour love. one, I was like, nope, let's do it. Let's I'm go. I'm going to do it. Didn't even blink. And and uh, you ended up getting, I mean, you got together. Yep. You spent yep. time together. Yep. You uh, obviously fell in love. Yep. You got married. Yeah, we did, yeah. And, and we have a little boy. Yeah. And we're expecting a little girl. A little girl. Little girl. I did not know the gender. Oh, you didn't. Okay. Yeah. yeah little girl. Oh, one of each. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see how they grow up. <laughs> These days, I don't, you never know, right? So we'll leave that. We'll let, we'll leave that one be. Um, and you wanted to continue your photography here. Yes. So you must have come up here just shortly before the winter games. I moved up here in May. Uh, no, I was here for May, 2014. Yeah. And then I went back for a, another two weeks. And I think I moved up here in June, before my birthday in June. So early June yeah. in 2014. And then, I, yeah, just before the Winter Games. That's, so that that's next amazing. season coming up, I, I wanted to do more photography. So I did work for Powder King um, in the lead up to the Winter Games and after it as well. And I worked with Powder King as much as I am ab have been able to, just providing them with images. Yeah. You fun. still get out to Powder King, I think. Yeah. On occasion. I, I, right? Not as much as I'd like. Yeah. I, I only wow. went up once last year, once the year before, but that was mostly so my wife didn't get um, uh, FOMO from me going and she's not able to because she's pregnant or she has oh, a new yeah, baby yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. And pregnant again. Yeah. And, and so now, I mean, I've been watching the development of your brand, mm -hmm. right? And, and at first it seemed... You know, I want to do this. How do I do this? How do you find that journey? Like, is it is it? It's a pretty challenging journey too. Super challenging. Yeah, yeah. it feels yeah. it feels a little lonely sometimes, which is why it's great to talk to someone like you because you have professional um, knowledge about photography and videography. And I think there's a great network of photographers in mm -hmm. Prince George. Mm -hmm. But the actual process of making some of this content is is lo is lonely for sure. Um, it can be a slog, eh? Yes. Like I think, I don't know. If, what what I find is that spending more time making content than really making art. 
I guess that would be the difference of what do you consider content and what do you consider art? Like what is the, what is the difference? Because you made you made them very different sounding at that point there. Well, I, you know, as I was saying that, I'm like in my in in the back of my logical brain was saying, well, Michael, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. What is? I mean, with photography, I think there's you know journalistic style photography, mm -hmm. and then there's which is you know very true to life, and then there's edited or like stylized photography on like what you would see from a wedding portfolio, the mm -hmm. colors are a little bit different to the day. Um, certain photographers have a bright and bold style or a black and white style or, a, or a, um, a toned down style or the grass is made to go brown. Like there's a whole bunch of different styles for it. Um, and then you get to the far, the other end of the spectrum um, from journalistic, which I think is very much a lot of your work, which I love seeing with like the black and white mm -hmm. um, uh, photography, uh, the, uh, the Jimi Hendrix thing, the, oh, the, the watercolor artist, artist inspired stuff that you do. Yeah, so yeah. I think depending on how much you manipulate the photograph, I think all photography is art. Mm -hmm, I agree. Um, 100%. And that there's just different wavelengths of it. Uh, well, I guess what I meant was I, so I'll, I'll do like I, ch I've challenged myself to do photos a certain way. And so I take the photo and I have a series of photos and then it's like, oh my gosh, I got to put them in here and I got to put them up on Instagram and I got to mm. come up with a thing and I got to do some hashtags. And so I've by got content, to, you mean like the, the actual admin of getting it the out there. The admin of getting it yeah, out there. I've yeah. tried to streamline my admin as much as possible. Um, yeah. There's a couple apps that really help on, on the iPhone. I do quite a lot on the phone with regards of um, constructing my posts and I do all my editing on my computer, but then I will airdrop it across to my iPhone and then edit from there. Mm -hmm. I do, I've, I've, I've had to learn how to do a lot of editing on my phone because I'm, I'm basically a, like, like when I first started, it was, it was desktop. Yeah. And then I Same. had, okay, I'm going to learn laptop stuff. Then it's like now though, and, and I found that, I'm really starting to take to, because I can get stuff done, yeah. right? Wherever I am, it doesn't matter. I don't have to be sitting at my desk. And now there's my brand new desktop. Yeah. Kind of getting a, a little dusty. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, the processing power on some of these phones is amazing now. And even for yeah. filming, like my phone can shoot ProRes RAW. Yeah. What have you got? You got 13? The 13 Pro Max. I, I am w waiting. I only have the 11. I like the, I, and this is going to sound a little technical maybe to some of the people that don't <laughs> understand video, but the rack focus. Yeah. The rack focus on the 13. And for those people that don't understand, it's moving, the, moving different subjects focusing at different focal lengths. So um, it's the, the cinema mode. Yeah. On, um, it's like portrait mode, but for video. Yeah, that's it's the, that's the way, fantastic. That's the way to explore it, I think. Yeah. Is, and it, you look, and when you're filming two people, if you look from one person to another, it moves the focus for you. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. And who? And this is funny because who would have thought 10 years ago, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, I would have never thought when I first got into photography, which was back in the manual days with yeah. film, yeah. that I would be talking about how I'm going to do cinematic, cinematic video at choose, and, there, and I'm choosing a phone based on that particular reason. Yeah. Not because I want to talk to somebody, but because I, I want to communicate in a different way. I think when you're making all these different things, you've got to remember that you're just trying to make a story. You're just yeah. trying to tell some sort of story or some sort of, um, uh, you're trying to get something across. And the medium to do that is so we have so much choice now mm -hmm. like before when it was in photography we had the film camera um but now we have film cameras plus digital cameras plus you know mirrorless digital cameras and cell phones and cell phones for video they're shooting 8k raw uh they're shooting prores they're shooting 120 240 or more frames per second for slow motion some of the stuff that you can do on a cell phone like I was telling someone about when I was in um, Japan and Australia for my 20, 2009 travels. I had a Sony Xperia uh, cell phone, and that took. I thought that I took had a th uh, yeah. the fat little fat one. Yeah. I thought that took incredible photographs, 
And I've looked back at some of them to try to look at them again, and they're awful. <laughs> but they're what I had. The best camera is the one you have in your pocket. The very best camera is the one you have on you. And that's all you got. And that, if that's what you have, then that's amazing. We tell people and now that like at Shaw, at Shaw, Shaw Spotlight, that yeah. we encourage people to tell their stories. Yeah. And they're like, well, I don't have, you know, for broadcast television. And yeah. they're like, I don't have the, I was like, no, you know what? All you need is a cell phone. Yeah. Because we're only working on the TV yeah. in HD. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's it. And they're amazed. And it's like, okay, go to it. Yeah, all these all, right. all these 8K, 4K frames per second, they're all they're all buzzwords at the end of the day. Like how many televisions are there that can show 8K? None that video? I know of. I None that I can afford. No, exactly. 4K televisions are only just recently becoming available to um, to purchase in affordable rates. The reason I, I think shooting in 4K for me is that I can, then I'm able to, I'm able to zoom in digitally, right? And that's the if same I, with 8K. And if I want to yeah. do, if I want to take that landscape that yeah. I shoot the 916 yeah. and go 16.9. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's it. Uh, so what does Giles Palmer see? I know you're working on this brand and what's the name of the brand? Giles Palmer. Giles Palmer Photography. That's me. Yeah. And your YouTube Is channel? Just Giles Palmer. Giles Palmer. Instagram? Giles, Giles Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. So this is easy. This is it, yeah. This is easy. Um, I actually had to track down on Instagram the original at Giles Palmer and message him and say, hey, I can see you haven't used your Instagram account in X amount of years. Could I have your? Could I have the at? And he said, "Oh yeah, sure, no worries." And he changed it, and I changed mine, and I got it. That's really cool. I had to change my whole account to be that. You do weddings? I do. Yes. You like weddings? I actually love weddings. Oh, oh, yeah, you're I love a better the adrenaline. Man than I am. Huh? You're a better man than I am. Yeah, I love the adrenaline, and I like like I said about the film cameras. I offer a, a Polaroid package, like a retro package, as mm -hmm. part of my. Um, wedding packages and uh, I carry around a Polaroid all day and take snaps of people. Really? Yeah. That's so cool. So at the end of the day, they get a 40 photograph album of all the people from the day. If you ever need a second shooter, I think I think it would be fun. Yeah. I think it'd be fun to work with you. Yeah, sure. I, I don't have, actually don't have any more weddings for this year. Well, that's okay. Yeah. I mean, just, just keep it in mind. We always say, okay, so for the last year and a half, two years, we yeah. always said, we got to do this, we got to do that. Well, the next one we got to do is the uh, burning, the, motion. the yeah, wool, the, the, the wire wool. Painting with, painting light with painting. light, light yeah. painting, yeah. I, you um, bought the wool, I bought some wool, we have we what have we little, need. I've got all the little stuff to do it. I just get so nervous about that kind of photography though, with fires and, you know, you hear about things being set on fire all the time. Ah, it'll be fun. Yeah, it will be. If something catches fire, it's like, well, there's another adventure. Yeah. There's there's a story to tell. Yeah. Right. Um, you're inspired by the same cat that I am. Yeah. Peter McKinnon. Oh yeah. Who is a, a photographer, videographer, content creator yep. in Toronto. Although he moved out of Toronto. I don't know where his new place is. Lake Simcoe. Did, was it, did it Lake, Lake Simcoe? I'm I, not I, sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't track him <clears throat> that closely. I thought he was just in the burbs. I don't know. He moved on a lake somewhere. And I don't know if that was some kind of funny thing that they did. I think that was just a cabin that he went to. A was family it? cabin. Yeah. But he sold his studio in Toronto. He did, yeah. And he took off. Yeah. Anyways, he's incredibly inspiring. Yes. And uh, and I get some fantastic ideas. You, uh, he seemed, he's more important to you. Yes. Right? Than, than maybe, like, did yeah. you want to talk about that? If you want to talk sure. about it, good. Yeah, if yeah, not, yeah. that's um, cool. For sure. I, um, in 2018... I was let go from a job that I worked very hard towards um, getting. Um, and I was very depressed about it because I did work really hard. It was a photography, social media-y type job. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting another job in photography working to build a website. And it was very solo type job. I was on my own a lot of the time. And I was watching YouTube just to have someone talking to me or someone you know with me there. And I stumbled across Peter McKinnon's videos. I don't remember the very first one I watched. And once I found his videos, I just became incredibly inspired and driven to do that, to do that, to do photography, to do video. It was, 
it was lighting a fire underneath me. And I think it, he, before I started to spiral into any sort of depression or self pity, I, um, was brought out of it before it started. Mm -hmm. I definitely think if I hadn't have been able to grab onto something to, to be inspired by something, I think, I don't know, maybe I would have sold my camera and never done it again. <gasps> Sacrilege. Yeah. So what if I take a, what if I take this clip, cut it out and send it to him? What? This what clip? you just said. Go for it. All right. Yeah. I can do that. So we can expect some Giles Palmer, more content from you. So yeah, they absolutely. can go to Giles Palmer and we're going to do this again. What's your, what, what's your, what's your website? Everything's Giles Palmer. So it's gilespalmerphotography.ca. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at Giles Palmer on Facebook, on Instagram, at Giles Palmer Photography on Facebook, and YouTube, I think, is currently just Giles Palmer is just my name. Um, I think there's a certain level you can get to subscriber-wise before you can change your URL, mm -hmm. and I'm currently sitting at 30-something subscribers, 27. I think I'm about 35 subscribers, something like that. Um, yeah, that's where I am. When, when people are getting into it, and, and this is the thing I, I, I'm always amazed at when people say, Oh, I'll get a website. Yeah. And everything will magically change. And you know what? I did make a website yeah. and I booked two weddings off it last year. Okay. Well, that, that, and that theory was, was through, shot down. That was through Squarespace. Yeah. And I did a little bit of SEO and they booked me from the island. They found me. Squarespace, I found a challenge. I've got a couple of domains, mm -hmm. right, registered. Yeah. And so I need to find a spot to park them. And and, uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and I've tried Squarespace, but uh, maybe I'll call you up and see if you can help me out with that. Squarespace is, is interesting for sure. It does yeah. definitely take some, um, some working to get it to be what you want it to be. Um, I might be doing an overhaul of my website. So yeah, maybe we could sit down and do that. That'd be that fun. would be fun. I, before we do that, I want to do some photography. I got to tell the story about the opening, the opening day of the, of the Canada winter games. Yeah. And we were invited to go up to, or I talked to the owner of the penthouse That's at right. the coast Inn of the North. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, come on up with me, man. We can yeah. shoot the fireworks from there. Yeah. We could not see any. Nope. <laughs> we nope. could not see Wasn't any. It, foggy? it was foggy. Yeah, we couldn't see anything. I couldn't see any fireworks. I had a blast shooting yeah. that. I, I, you know, I just in general, like meeting, like you say, meeting all the people, yeah. this, this, this city has an incredible arts community and there's, there's a wealth of knowledge in yeah. the, in the video and the photography. And there's an, um, some amazing photographers in Prince George as well. I think incredible photographers. Um, I'm still in contact with most of the people from that, um, from that Canada winter games. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you just did the BC summer games. I did just do the BC summer games. Uh, unfortunately I got COVID halfway through oh. and I had to stop and I had to, someone took over my, my shoots, which was amazing. But um, yeah, the, the community, like meeting the people, like is, is always amazing. Much thanks to my friend Giles Palmer, a photographer, videographer, very talented man. Uh, if you want to check out Giles' stuff, check out his YouTube channel, Giles Palmer, or go to gilespalmerphotography.ca, or you can find him on Instagram, at Giles Palmer. The theme music for Culture Confluence is performed by Prince George Jazz Ensemble Navaz. Culture Confluence is recorded at the Arts North Podcast Studio and is a production of Arts North in association with Studio 2880 and Seifer Radio. I'm Michael Cast for Culture Confluence. <laughs>